Now I've been hunting for turkeys for years. You've been hunting turkeys for years. You guys out there have probably been hunting turkeys for years, done it a long time with just that standard front bead. What are the advantages that we're gonna gain with the red dot? So with modern shotgun ammunition becoming more capable and choke tube technology like going through the roof, we're seeing patterns that are being thrown out of these guns. Even your trusty old Remington 870, your Mossberg 500 or 835 that are unbelievable. We're, we're effectively extending the distances by tens of yards on these new shotguns with these loads, with these choke tubes. And the red dot is helping you maximize and take advantage of all of that. One thing that I'll tell you as a shotgunner, <clears throat> we take for granted that these shotguns are going to like hit where we point. And the reality is it's not always the case. And when we think about pattern densities as tight as they are and, and, and overall pattern radius is being so small at extended distances, where that pattern is going is extremely important. With the use of an optic, whether it's a magnified rifle scope or in this case, red dots, you have the ability to tune your point of aim to your point of impact so that you're not missing by three, four inches when your pattern's only five, six inches wide, uh, which is a real possibility. So really dialing in your, your point of aim and your point of impact and putting the two on top of each other in overlay is, is helping you extend that effective distance and putting pattern where it needs to go. Effectively, you're sighting yeah. in your shotgun and it's going to aid in better patterning your yes, shotgun absolutely. as well. Uh, a couple other features that I really like about a red dot on a turkey gun, you've got an extremely fine point of yep. aim. And Ryan, you're talking about being able to extend your effective range. By using the red dot, you're gonna have that full field of view of the bird, you're gonna be able to put that dot exactly where you want it and not obscure the bird in any way. I know uh, oftentimes if I'm just using a front bead and the bird is out there, you know, maybe 40, 50, 60, something like that, you know, it gets to be a little bit, not, not guesswork, but you are obscuring the target. Yeah. Man, you've got the confidence with this thing to really put that pattern where you want it to go. And I think even practicing and shooting and getting to know your shotgun and the load that you're pushing through it is gonna be enhanced when you use a red dot sight. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Two MOA aiming point on the Spark Solar. So at 50 yards, that's an inch in diameter, but it's very bright. So it's not something that you're gonna be hunting for when you've got a bird out in the decoy strutting or if he's hung up. It's very bright dot, you're gonna see it. You can put it right on the head or right on the waddles wherever you need uh, to set that aim point up. So it's really, really quite clever. Right off the bat, we call this a like an enclosed emitter housing uh, style red dot, and then we have what we call an open emitter housing style red dot. So take note, immediately first thing you see, it's a much different size. It's lighter weight, more compact. One of the biggest advantages to an optic like this is the apparent field of view when you're looking through it. So from the shooter's perspective, when you're behind this optic, you only have this thin perimeter of material around the lens. It's almost like the dot is just floating in space, and a lot of shooters do prefer that. Um, whereas the crossfire here on the table, very similar concept to the Spark Solar, just a different, uh, I guess, means of activation or actuation. I call the Spark Solar the digital version. I call the crossfire the analog version. Uh, when I look at these two optics, again, very similar design, but an inherent advantage here to the crossfire, in my opinion, is this rheostat style adjustment. I can adjust brightness on the fly with like a gross motor skill instead of this finite motor skill button press. So that if I've got a bird that I've been working since fly down and I forget that my dot is set on four, like a low intensity setting, and all of a sudden it's eight o'clock in the morning and the sun's come through and that bird's working in, I notice my dot's dimmer than it should be. I just give a quick gross adjustment to setting seven and I'm huntable. That can definitely be nice. You got cold hands, maybe you're wearing a little bit thicker glove, being able to grab that and get a hold of it with solid purchase, make that rapid adjustment. Definitely a really nice feature of the Crossfire. Absolutely. Ryan, the setup we have in front of us has a Picatinny rail that's got the optic mounted on it. When I got my shotgun, it had none of those things and really wasn't set up to accommodate a red dot sight. What's the best way for a person to get a dot on their shotgun? Sure, so if your gun isn't drilled and tapped, you do still have a couple of different options. One, you can get it drilled and tapped. You can buy rails that are gonna fit the contour of the top of your receiver more than likely, and then a quick gunsmith trip and punch four holes in the top and, and you're good to go there. Then you can attach something like a Picatinny or a Weaver style rail. There's also a couple of optics manufacturers and mount manufacturers that make a device that's going to go between the receiver and the stock. And really you're gonna be limited to the open concept emitter housing optics, and it's gonna position that optic just forward of the wrist of the stock, quite close to the shooter's eye, which is actually really advantageous. You get this huge field of view, it's really intuitive. 
Um, other shotguns that aren't drilled and tapped can accept things like this saddle mount here. So by replacing the two trigger pins here with these larger screws that go in here, the saddle that goes over the top of the receiver effectively emulates the same mounting surface or a similar mounting surface to this Picatinny rail. These are still pretty popular and prolific and for Eric's 870 here, he can revert it back to waterfall mode just by simply taking those two pins out and putting the old ones back in. Easy day on that. Yep. If you guys have any questions about getting a red dot on your shotgun, give us a call. You might talk to Ryan. Hit us up on any of our social media platforms. We're always there. We're always active. We want to answer your questions. We want to help you guys out and ultimately get you that big gobbler down this spring.